This is a cast iron park bench that I found on the side of the road for free. And I'm going to be replacing all the wood and fixing up the cast metal, painting it. Uh, so this is just a before. It's got a nice uh, flower design. These boards are about two and a half, two and a quarter inches wide by about half inch thick. There originally were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those boards. And then on the side here that mounts into the backing, there's two of these boards that are about ten and a half inches and that's also going to be about half inch thick. All the hardware appears to be salvageable. I think I can take those off and reuse them. The back, two boards along the side and actually along this entire back it looks like you screw in with screws so I'll reuse those screws if I can this is a INNOVA brand Innova it looks like it might have been painted previously as I can see some of this paint's coming off. I don't know if that's the original coat or the previous coat. So the step, uh, actually before that, there's also two brackets, let's see, that run along the bottom that are screwed in. So the first step is to just double check measurements, disassemble everything. I'm going to scrape and clean this, soak it in vinegar if I can, uh, prime it, paint it, get new boards, sand the boards, stain them, pre-drill all the holes, and then reassemble. Before I start, here's just a better view of the bottom. This, These straps are kind of bent to, to match the curve of these side pieces and that strap is roughly let's say 15 16 inches long here's just a better view of the bolts that hold this whole thing in you can see they're not too rusted so they should come off pretty easily also originally I thought this was like a memorial uh, nameplate, but I think this is actually this, the brand, the style of the bench, R-E-G-A-L-I-A, -A. and it says trademark right there, which leads me to believe that that's the, not someone's name, but the style. And just for reinstallation purposes, these straps are about 18 inches apart from each other with 13 and a half inches, give or take. From the side. Uh, I don't know what kind of wood this is, but I'll be replacing with the the wood that will last a little bit longer, I hope. So all of the bolts came off, uh, or the nuts came off uh, using a 10 millimeter ratchet, and all the screws uh, came off pretty easily just using a Phillips screwdriver. If you do get uh, some screws that are just spinning in place, uh, what I've done is I pull on the bracket as I screw it, and as soon as I get it to come out a little bit, then you can kind of grab on it with some pliers and twist and that should get it out. The two bolts that hold in the the back horizontal pieces here, those nuts are actually uh, these cap nuts, whereas the ones that hold on the seat portion 
or just a regular standard net. So you've got two cap nets. It's actually a combo. you got your regular nut here and then your cap nut. The four screws that attach to these little side brackets are flat heads as opposed to these round head ones that attach to the metal bracket that runs under the seat on both sides. To get the bolt portion out, I'm just putting the wood on top of another piece of wood and then hitting adjacent to it and it's popping up. I'm using a soft rubber mallet. So with all the hardware stripped, uh, this is the wood we have to replace. I numbered the bench, uh, the seat portions, uh, before I took them off just so I can make sure that they're all the same or note any differences. This is the edge of the seat and this is further back where it meets the, the backrest. You can see on the, this is the bottom. This must have been the original color uh, before it aged and weathered. So I'll try to go back with a, probably a similar color. This is some oak wood I just picked up from Home Depot. Uh, you can see this was a 1x3 and the, the length, the, the, the width is correct and it's about the same thickness as well. This was a dollar fifty-two a linear foot and I didn't want to cut it in store so um, it was about 60 sixty dollars this came in ten foot length so I just got four of them so sixty dollars for that I'm gonna let it acclimate outside for a week and I'm gonna hit it with this primer uh, sorry no I'm gonna hit the the metal after I clean the rust with the primer with the black gloss paint and the wood I'm gonna sand well sand cut sand again hit hit it with some oil and that should be good. Okay, so it's been a week. I left the wood outside clamped um, to uh, acclimate uh, so it doesn't warp too much when I install it on the bench. I put the screws and bolts in a jar of vinegar for a day, and then I threw them in a jar of ketchup because that's some weird thing I saw online. And it seems like the, nothing really changed since after the vinegar, so. Um, these were originally black screws and in the past 20 minutes after taking them out of the ketchup, they have a quick uh, surface rust, so I might actually replace these um, with stainless steel screws if I can find them. A uh, couple things I've got out, some tools, those are going to be for some recess holes for these bolts to fit in, uh, and then I've just got some thin screws to make the pilot holes for all the screws. I also have just a little sander that I'm going to run over the boards uh, before I stain anything. Just measuring tape and a angle box of sandpaper for this guy. Uh, I'm going to clean up these guys first and paint them. Uh, to clean them up I'm using this stainless steel wire brush. I'm going to get all this old kind of flaky paint off uh, and I'm going to pay extra attention to any flat surface that will potentially have rainwater sitting on it for extended periods of time and then I'll prime it, paint it, let it dry and uh, switch over to working on the wood. After just a minute of the wire wheel you can actually see I think this bench used to be a kind of uh, orangish red, an auburn, auburn red color. I'm using uh, soapy water to make sure that all the dirt's off, and then I'm going in.
cleaning all the surfaces. I'll do one side at a time. First I'm focusing on the, the flat portions, then I'm going to go back and I hit the edge, and then I'll flip it up and I'll hit the top and the bottom. Before, after. For this back portion here, I ended up needing to grab uh, a little scraper, or you could use the metal end of uh, a clamp if you have one, because uh, this paint was not really coming up with the uh, steel wheel, so I'm just going to scrape as much off as I can. This is going to be covered by wood, so it's not an appearance thing, but I do want the new paint to adhere properly. So I'm just going to scrape what I can, and then go back over with the wire wheel. You can see this is working pretty well. You can use these uh, for when you're painting uh, interiors, just to get a nice flush surface. So here's with the coat of primer, and now I'm applying the black gloss enamel. I might end up doing two coats, depending on how the first coat comes out. I think one coat might actually do the job, but I'll let it dry a day or a couple days and then uh, look at it then. What I'm thinking about doing is going back with a little bit of gold paint and a paintbrush and highlighting all of these details. Might be slightly time consuming, but I think it would, it would look great. Currently, I think it looks awesome. So, unfortunately it rained after I put the primer and the black paint on this one, uh, and I was unable to take it out of the rain, uh, so I will have to refinish this one with black paint, but uh, you can see all these little kind of permanent watermarks. It actually kind of looks cool, but uh, I will have to refinish this one. Overall, uh, I think this will work pretty well. You can see the, the new and the old. Here are the other two pieces primed. I retouched this one uh, that had the rain damage. It came out okay. If there's issues, I'll compare this one with uh, the second side after I paint that black and see if there are issues. This took exactly one full can of this white primer, this 12 ounce primer, to do all three pieces. And this 15 ounce can of black should be enough, uh, hopefully, to coat the rest. Okay, so kind of a bummer because I ran out of paint and I just had this little bit left. So I'm going to go grab another can and I think I'll do everything with the second coat just to be safe. Okay, so I've got a face mask on and goggles and I'm just going to sand all of these boards in one go on both sides and then I'm going to cut and anything, uh, any new cuts, I'll just resand, and um, that should work uh, pretty well. Okay, so everything sanded. I ended up switching to a belt sander, and I used 80 grit, and that just saved so much time. It worked really good. On one of these, I beveled the edge along just one side, so half of this will be the the bottom seat that touches your uh, your leg, and the top will be the the part that could touch your neck. So after all the boards are sanded, I just wiped them down with a wet cloth and let them dry. Now what I've done is I'll take the old board and I put it on top. I use this little square to just trace a line. And then through the pre-drilled hole here, 
I align it and I take this pencil and I just make it a little longer and I uh, mark exactly where the hole is and then this little recess part here I just free ball so I remember to do it. Uh, I'm cutting the board uh, one four foot piece on this side the other four foot piece on this side and I'm leaving this piece blank that just gives me at least two nice clean cuts on each end. Okay so I have my seven main boards cut five for the seat and two for the back. This is the leftover wood I'm left with some scraps here uh, about eight feet actually. Uh, the last two pieces I need to make are going to be the trickiest are these two side pieces here that uh, go along the back piece. You can see they're actually shorter than, or not as wide rather, as the bench pieces. So what I've got to do is I've got to cut about half an inch off the side. And I'm going to try to do that with this with the saw. Uh, if I can't do that then I'll switch over to a, a band saw or sawzall. Additionally these ones have two little uh, screw holes that do not go all the way through. Filling the holes is going pretty easily. Uh, just drilling straight through into the block below. And then I'm gonna go back with uh, whatever one of these fits this the original hole size. Looks like it's gonna be this half inch one if I had to guess that looks like a winner three eighths actually fits a little bit better so I will I think I'll do half inch half inch looks like it's the exact size yeah okay so I've got all the holes drilled and the recess holes for the uh, bolts I'm just gonna run over these portions real quick with the uh, sander just to get off any of the uh, parts that are popping up there. So I didn't have a chance to film the staining process because it was too dark, um, but I used the Waco Natural Finish Danish Oil. Uh, I did two coats, just wipe, wiped it on, left it for 15 minutes, I did a second coat for another 15 minutes, and then I wiped it off. Here's just a before and after. Um, the unfinished versus the finished. I just washed it down really quickly so you can see that I'm pretty happy with the, the color. The only other thing I didn't do with this project that was just too cost prohibitive was uh, there's a UV coating you can add to this wood I think before the stain uh, called OSMO it's, and it's just a good UV protection that will make sure that this oak doesn't slowly turn gray over time. I'm putting the bolts in the wood first, although I'll try one uh, to make sure that this doesn't mess up the installation process. I'm just, uh, initially I'm just hitting the bolt directly down. Here, I'll do it on this one. Take my bolt, get it centered, and then once it's flush, I move it over a little bit, and hit it to the recess, and I'm pretty happy with that. So most of the boards are in right now. To get the top board in, I did have to use a razor blade to just trim that. Uh, this co this corner here gets a little bit tight. Okay, so getting all the boards in takes a little bit of finesse. Uh, I did have to use my rubber mallet to get all of the uh, bolts to align to the holes. You can see in the back here that this isn't 100% square. Um, I don't know if that's uh, just how it came when I when I got it, um, but that's fine. I replaced the two screws on both ends here with the original screws, uh, but I am going to go buy new ones because it didn't come with these additional eight screws along the side here, and I, I just want that extra support because that's the only thing that's holding in this, this whole back part. 
and then the rest goes pretty smoothly. Um, I'm just pre-drilling uh, these, uh, doing little pilot holes uh, for these brackets, and then I switch over and throw in these original screws here. And I'll screw that in. And then uh, a few places to touch up paint from where the, because I wasn't too careful. Um, and uh, I will have to touch up uh, a little bit of the stain on the corners here to get that in. You can see I had to I had to shave that off with a razor blade a little bit. But uh, pretty much done at this point. Okay, and pretty much done for now. Still do have to fix up that paint, like I said. Uh, next time I will put it down on like cardboard instead of concrete. That's my bad and I have to fix up the stain and then add the additional screws to secure in this the metal backing besides that it's done uh, I think the only thing I would have liked to do um, with this job that I, I didn't do and I didn't get a chance to do was maybe put a, a clear coating or, or some type of UV coating on it. I'll try to keep it out of the sun and maybe I, I can apply that afterwards, but overall not bad for about uh, 80 bucks and uh, a day of work.